Again, just notched one of its busiest weeks ever, but it's not over yet. And one of the news items for this week refers to the Intel Comet Lake slides that were leaked out there, i.e. fabricated because they're fake. So we're going to be talking about those. Uh, Ryzen 2000 and second gen prices dropping significantly with the launch of the new chips. Not surprising, but also a good opportunity to potentially buy something instead of third gen if you were considering third gen the second gen Ryzen CPUs at their newer prices are some of AMD's biggest competition from AMD. Samsung 5 nanometer EUV based LP nodes are progressing, uh, custom Navi cards for mid-August, and MSI updating the AM400 series boards with 32 megabyte BIOS chips. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim, keeping a high performance focus but reducing the footprints to accommodate full memory slot compatibility. The Dark Rock Slim comes with one of Be Quiet's Silent Winds 3 120mm fans built for low noise operation. The Dark Rock Slim advertises cooling capability up to 180 watt TDP, but mixes in a matte blackout color design to combine performance and looks. Learn more at the link in the description below. So first up, that Intel Comet Lake slide, it's fake. We saw uh, our friends over at PC World had posted a similar story talking about why they thought it would probably be fake and pointed out a few things like silly typos, apostrophes where they don't belong, although Intel did make one of those mistakes itself, and things like putting the dollar sign after the numbers, stuff Intel wouldn't do, but PC World pointed those out. What we did is we just reached out to some people uh, in addition to their information, and the answer was that, although not official, uh, our understanding is from sources close to the matter that these are not slides that Intel made. Intel did not make those slides. And we'll have it on the screen at some point, but uh, basically the rumor was something like 10 core chips at $500 at five or over gigahertz all core. Uh, and this is just kind of, it's, it's a dangerous expectation to set because we end up in the same scenario where we were with Ryzen. That's not to say Intel can't do this at some point, just like it's not to say AMD couldn't do higher frequencies at some point, but with Ryzen 3000 series, you saw rumors months ago that were saying it was going to be 5 gigahertz, and the implication was all core, which everyone reasonable knew that was never going to happen. But unfortunately, uh, because a lot of people are inexperienced with this stuff and you know they, they don't have uh, enough background knowledge to know that 5 gigahertz all core on the Ryzen 3000 series wouldn't happen without LN2, uh, the, the uh, end result was that a lot of people ended up feeling disappointed at launch, even though it was actually a pretty damn good launch overall. So uh, Comet Lake slides, the best thing to do right now is to ignore them and not listen to rumors about Comet Lake until it's close enough to launch that we're going to get some actual leaks from motherboard vendors or something like that, people who probably have the CPUs rather than fake slides. So yeah, that slide, not real. Intel Corporation, its official comment is Intel does not comment on rumors. This is a, it's a pretty standard official comment. The uh, information we collected from other sources though, including some of the motherboard vendors to validate that information is that the slide is fake. So that'll, that'll wrap that story. And PC World has a kind of funny write up by Brad about things like misgivings on typos and dollar sign positioning on the chart. So you can check his article if you want to see more of that. If you don't believe me, uh, Intel's new interconnect and packaging. This is real news. This comes from Intel's newsroom website. And as the monolithic die approach to building chips gets more complex and limited by physics, both AMD and Intel have taken a chiplet approach to CPU design, as you've seen with Ryzen 3000 series. At Semicon West, Intel took the lid off new packaging and interconnect technologies that the chip maker claims will carry chip designs into the future. Intel's new packaging technology is called Co-EMIB, and it essentially combines embedded multi-die interconnect, or EMIB, and Favoros. As you recall, Intel, or if you recall anyway, Intel debuted EMIB back in 2017 when it announced a partnership with AMD to bring Intel processors with Radeon graphics to market. That partnership resulted in the KB Lake G chip with Radeon graphics, powering the Hades Canyon NUC that we tested and overclocked extensively. And we can probably find some old footage of that and put it on the screen. Uh, actually, when we did the Hades Canyon overclocking, we used this custom 
case that was made by former Danger Den guys, and we'll, we'll drop a shot up of that or something. So that was pretty fun. But that's where EMIB more or less started. Favros is relatively new. It's something that we talked about around December of last year. And it's uh, a 3D chip stacking approach to chip design. It is supposed to result in what Intel is calling hybrid x86 processors. And the chips using Favros are slated to debut in Intel's 10 nanometer Lakefield lineup by using both Favros and EMIB, hence co-EMIB. Intel claims it allows for linkage of even more computing performance and capability together. That's their direct quote. In addition to connecting multiple Favros elements, designers can also link other tiles, see chiplets, uh, such as analog or memory components. Then there's the new Omnidirectional Interconnect, or ODI. ODI is a communication framework that combines the horizontal communication of EMIB and the vertical communication of Favros. ODI uses large through silicon vias, or TVS, to communicate and deliver power vertically through the base die. The larger TVSs offer less resistance and facilitate higher bandwidth. This approach also means that Intel can use fewer TVSs, optimizing die space. Lastly, Intel discussed a new die-to-die -die interface known as MDIO. MDIO is more of a modular system composed of a library of intellectual property blocks and is based on Intel's advanced interface bus, or AIB, uh, which is a PHY level interconnect, and more on that in the Intel newsroom. Sometimes we talk about hirings in the industry and important people. Intel, uh, just to kind of close out Intel as the news item here for the first half, because it's been, let's be honest, AMD for uh, three months now. Intel has hired Claire Dixon as the Corporate Vice President and Chief Communications Officer or CCO. Claire Dixon comes from VMware, actually, and uh, served as the Senior Vice President there and Chief Communications Officer. This follows up on a lot of Intel hirings lately. Most of them have been in the graphics group. Raja Kadori is notable. Tom Peterson is notable. Ryan Shroud as well. And uh, prior to this, though, Dixon was the uh, vice president of global comms at eBay as well, and has now moved to Intel. Ryzen, can't, can't go a few hours without saying that. Ryzen 2000 and second gen Threadripper are getting price cuts. This is actually pretty good news. So in our 3600 review, despite how positive we were about the 3600 and strongly recommending it, it was literally in the title, uh, also the 2700 and 2700X, have fallen in price to a point where they're pretty good competition to the 3600. So depending on what you're doing, how much you want gaming performance versus the extra cores and threads, these 2000 series chips are a good opportunity at the new prices while they're in stock anyway. They're not being made anymore to our knowledge, but we don't fully know yet. Uh, but they're going to go EOL at some point soon. So while at the new prices, they are a good competition option to the 3000 series outside of Intel. In the wake of AMD's Ryzen 3000 launch, prices have fallen to about $160 for the Ryzen 5 2600X, which is a CPU that we actually previously gave uh, an award for one of the best budget options, and now that's even more true. That's a hefty discount over the original $260 price. Meanwhile, the R5 2600 is about $140. You can buy that and overclock it to 2600X levels with minimal effort. So that would be a good option to save an extra 20 bucks. That's $60 off its initial launch price. And then the flagship R7 2700X has been dropped to $250, where it launched with a $330 price point. Also, first gen Ryzen, where you can find them, uh, can sometimes be cheaper than that, although you're kind of uh, your parsing hairs at that point, it might be better to just go with second gen if you can find them. So AMD's second generation of Threadripper is getting its own price cuts as well. We haven't talked about this yet. With the R9 3900X encroaching on the bottom run of the Threadripper 2000 product stack, it makes sense for AMD to drop prices in the Threadripper 2950X and 2920X brackets. When the R9 3950X debuts in September, these price chops will make even more sense as the chip will no doubt further cannibalize last-gen Threadripper. The Threadripper 2950X is currently listed at $730, a fair way south of its $899 launch price. Alternatively, AMD's 2920X is going for $340 at B&H Photo. The 2920X debuted at $650 for reference. Galax is rolling out PCIe 4 SSDs with a 500 gigabyte option as well. I've been talking about these a bit, so these are obviously targeted for use with X570. It's the debut PCIe Gen 4 platform. Storage is the primary use case of PCIe Gen 4. There's really no, no use case in graphics right now, consumer graphics right now. So if you really need 
high speed storage, uh, Gen 4 is where you should be looking. And people who need it probably know they need it. And if you don't know you need it, you might not. Uh, so another thing here to, to note briefly, the speed of the interface is not necessarily the speed of the device. So keep that in, I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. But just like a SATA 3 uh, port will not make an old old device, like a SATA, SATA 2 device, operate at faster speeds just by having a faster interface. It's also got to be a faster controller on the device or faster memory on the device. So with the 500 gigabyte SSD, this is using the Fizon uh, 5016 E16 controller, which is one of the faster ones. So, so far what we know are that the models from Gigabyte and Corsair are the first, the debut Gen 4 models. We've talked about those. Sabrent had one come out as well. We talked about last week. Now Galax is ready to enter the as of yet uncrowded PCIe 4 arena. As with previous SSDs based on the new PCIe Gen 4 standard, Galax's new HOF Pro will use the Fizon PS5016 E16 controller and Toshiba's 96 layer 3D TLC NAND. The Galax Hall of Fame Pro will be based on the M22280 form factor and will be passively cooled with an aluminum heatsink. The Galax Hall of Fame Pro does manage to differentiate itself a bit in offering a 500 gigabyte capacity option. Sequential read and write speeds vary based on model, but the two terabyte offering tops out at five gigabyte per second read and 4.4 gigabytes per second to write, which is in line with the on paper specs we've seen from other PCIe 4 SSDs. While there's no word on price, the drives are expected to hit retail channels by the end of the month. Samsung recently confirmed that its foundry has certified full flow tools from both Cadence and Synopsys. The new tools will be used for chip designs based on Samsung's 5 nanometer 5 LPE or low power early node. Samsung certified both the Cadence full flow digital solution and uh, design tools and the Synopsys Fusion design platform using ARM Cortex A53 and ARM Cortex A57 cores. Quote, as part of our long-standing collaboration with Cadence, we've confirmed that its digital full flow meets and exceeds the requirements for designing with the 5 LPE process technology. Samsung's Vice President of Design Technology commented on Samsung's collaboration with Synopsys and said that, quote, Synopsys continues to be our vendor of choice for collaboration on new node development and enablement so our foundry customers can confidently ramp their designs to volume production in all market segments, including automotive, AI, high-performance computing, and mobile. According to Anantech, the newly certified tools include compilers, validators, power circuit optimizers, and EUV-specific tools. In our AMD RX 5700 XT review, we primarily took issue with the blower cooler design. And although you can kind of work around some of its issues with an easy mod, it's still ideal, as we said in the video, to just wait for partner models. So those partner models are expected to launch around mid-August, and uh, the Vice President and General Manager of Radeon noted that custom Navi cards will be here in mid-August. He said, quote, hey all, custom AIB designs will be hitting the market mid-August uh, in a Reddit thread, noted that, and also noted some justification for the blower cooler. The, only, the real justification is it's cheap. That's why they did it. So that's why it was done. But the quote given was, the Radeon Group historically has had a bad reputation of producing product launch charts that didn't match up real world performance. Love it or hate it, the blower allowed us to guarantee performance in every system to match our launch charts. Not everyone cools their PC as good or as well maybe as a reviewer and definitely not as well as some of the pictures you guys have shared. It was my goal to clean all of this up so that you can trust our performance that you hear from us on stage. That is not true. That's, that is not why AMD made the blower cooler. That's bullshit. So we'll just point that out right now. That's a really good after the fact uh, reason for why the blower cooler was chosen. The blower cooler was chosen because it's cheap and relatively easy to make. Uh, there might be a behind the scenes reason of not wanting to step on board partner's toes, whereas Nvidia can kind of just say, you know what, we'll do what we want, and what are you guys gonna do about it? So AMD doesn't have quite that position with its board partners, but the reason is definitely not because it doesn't line up with the charts otherwise, um, because that's just not, that's not valid. Some of the, the, the charts are, they already have BS in them anyway, like calculating things off of a peak clock. That rarely happens. So um, that answer, not valid. But the thing that matters is that the custom cards will come out in mid-August. So that's, that's the aspect of this that you could take away from it. 
MSI last item updating AM4 400 series boards with 32 megabyte BIOS chips. With AMD's growing family of processors, backwards compatibility on socket AM4 boards is becoming a challenge for some motherboard vendors. In particular, MSI has had issues with 16 megabyte BIOS chips on 300 400 series motherboards. To resolve this, MSI is relaunching AM4 400 series boards with 32 megabyte chips to better accommodate microcode updates and storage. The new MSI boards will have a new identifier on them. That'll be max at the end of it. And that is, uh, that, that's how you know it's been updated with the larger BIOS. The real thing here is we experienced this with one of our gigabyte boards too, where it sort of half flashes the BIOS, depending on which chip you have in there. And it can cause some, uh, some issues or at least inconvenience in the best case. So uh, A320A Pro is getting updated for B450 boards. They've got B450 Pro, B450M Pro VDH, B450 Gaming Plus, Pro M2, Mortar Max, Tomahawk, uh, and A Pro. And all of those have, we already said, oh, B450 MA Pro as well. So those are all updated with BIOS. And X470 Gaming Pro and Gaming Plus are getting updated. And it's we're not clear yet if other models will also get larger BIOS chips, but that is what MSI has officially listed so far. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Check back for more. We have a lot more follow-up Ryzen coverage and some follow-up Navi coverage. You can subscribe, as always, to catch that, or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up our new, new GN Teardown Toolkit. And uh, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help there as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.